Hi everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter and Connor's still travelling so filling in for him is Tim. Oh, <laughs> hello. We're going to talk about Outcast Season 1 Episode 6, it's called From the Shadows mm. It Watches. Full spoilers for the episode follow. <laughs> now Tim, you've not been here yes, talking sir. to me about uh, the show, Connor has. Uh, mm -hmm. We were both of the opinion that last week's was the best episode yet. Mm -hmm. Um, do you agree with that sentiment? Um, yeah, I, I would say so. I, I say as a whole, I feel like the show kind of progressively gets like a little more interesting each episode. Um, you know, more or less. I I don't know. For me, I don't think there's been like like uh, I, I'm liking this show. I, I think it's good. I don't think there's necessarily been like huge, you know. Uh, differences between most episodes like it's not like i'm like oh the second issue the sir second episode sucked but the third issue was amazing you know like um it's been pretty even for the most part for me i'd say yeah 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 no i think we both really liked last week's because it mm. because it added a lot of emotion to it like i cared about the characters a, a lot more because of all the yeah. with his wife and like all that stuff that came out so this episode i can I, see that this episode i thought was good it wasn't as good as last week's but it was mm -hmm. uh the Reverend uh, dealing with his past and dealing with the fact that he might be useless at what he does and he needs Kyle. Uh, I, yeah. thought, I thought that was interesting, kinda, how much in the tapes and all that. Yeah, uh, I really like that kind of, like you could really feel like the frustration with him and like how badly he wanted to, you know, do it himself. Even like when, you know, kind of like Kyle comes uh, towards the end and they're <laughs> trying to... Um, what what the hell do you call it? Exercise. Uh, exercising, <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, that giant guy, um, which man, he was just like a mountain of a man. Like uh, afterwards, when he's just talking to like the reverend, like just in like the church pews, and like he gets up and shakes his hand, and his and hands he can't like, even see his head. Yeah, yeah his hands look so big compared to his. That that guy <laughs> needs to exercise the fat from his body. <laughs> Get what I did there, because exercise and exercise yeah, are really gotcha. similar words. Yeah. Um, I would love to see you say that to his face. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. I would be smushed into smithereens. Um, now, the last thing I like with the Reverend was the woman that he's seen, whose name I cannot remember. Uh, she, like, comes to him, and she's basically like, breaking up with him, because they've got a thing that's kind of starting to get going, because he's keeping yeah. things from her, and he won't let her in. So he's like, all right, you know what? You won't let in? Fine. And he's like, come come see the possessed man, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I like that scene. I, I like the sort of the gymnastics that we're going through in terms of, like, interacting with each other. Yeah. So that, that was cool. Uh, creepy old lady. Oh, that scene was the, like, oh, I, I was just imagining, like, imagine just waking up and having that lady over you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so, I was like, oh. Yeah, at one point I thought she was actually going to kiss him as well, which is... Yeah, there was, like, a weird semi sexual like undertone to it especially yeah. like, the way she was talking to like she was saying like a lot of stuff like come here and like you know kind of yeah stuff that felt like well, very, like Ooh. they set up last time that she wasn't happy with the bodies just possessed and we know yeah. that the demons and like head but head with uh sydney played by brent spiner are like waiting for this thing to happen with him mm. and she's like messing with that plans and brent spiner is not happy about it whatsoever yeah, because he looks pissed, the, and then they find her later on, of course, and she's she's dead. So, yeah. the the only thing that kind of like I don't know makes me like laugh a little bit, and, and like uh, I don't, like I don't know if you guys have like talked about this before, but it's like how many people are possessed in this town? Like, is this just like the worst town? Well, I mean, go go with ever. the uh, the videotapes that the Reverend's yeah. got at the start. <laughs> it's been. At least th this town in the surrounding area has quite a high, high yeah. population of possession. Because, uh, uh, because like I feel like you know I like yeah I love all this weird stuff and like I always love hearing about like you know supposedly true life stories about this and like whenever you see like a special on like an exorcism or something it's it's always like just one person it's never like uh yeah like forty eight percent of this town <laughs> was uh, possessed yeah. Uh, do you know what I like about this episode though is I like that the whole thing because we see Kyle has uh, got a job and he's trying to send money yeah. to his family he's trying to like sort of right his wrongs and 
Mm-hmm. What I like about this is that this up until now, every time he's went out with the Reverend to do like a, a case, mm-hmm. it feels like he's been dragged along against his will. I like that this one, he makes the choice. He realizes that he has to deal with this. He can't keep running away if he ever wants yeah. to get his family back. And at this point, I actually care about him getting back with his family because of because of last week's episode. So, like, I feel like all right, this is him saying, right, it's time to do this. I'm on mm-hmm. board. Let's try and solve this problem. Yeah, I, I feel like we're kind of past the point now where we're getting some of this kind of setup stuff out of the way. And it's like, all right, yeah, we can get past that reluctant hero phase of the you know show or whatever and kind of get into like the nitty gritty. And like, I feel like you can kind of start seeing like things getting like set up. Yeah. And obviously uh, stuff escalates because Sydney comes by the Reverend at the end and carves a, mm-hmm. uh, a pentagram into his... Yeah. Uh, into his skin. Mm-hmm. I I don't quite understand why he didn't just kill him. Uh, mm-hmm. Like if he's this evil, possibly Satan himself or whatever. Like, but maybe mm-hmm. there is a rhyme and reason to it. Um. Well, I might know a little something because I read the comic book. So I. Well, in I that case, if then. I, well, if that if yeah. that, oh, that says to me, okay, there's maybe a reason to it. So that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Because okay. I'll yeah I, I won't say anything else. But yeah. actually, that that is one thing that's a little hard uh for me with this show because um i the like the third trade because i I read the series in trade so and the third one just came out like maybe a couple weeks ago maybe last month or something but i i just got it like recently and then i was like a couple episodes behind and then like i read the trade and then i started catching up on the episodes and then it was like just like a weird mishmash because they are very similar but then it's also kind of like all right i'm forgetting what has not happened yet mm, in the yeah. show and what, I has, know what you mean uh, uh, certainly not the show's fault or anything though uh, I'll a couple of little things to mention uh, from this week uh, the woman that the reverend has seen has an awful son who is ginger it's a shame that Connor's yeah. not here this week to berate about it <laughs> because <laughs> he's basically the annoying hick version of Connor and, <laughs> like, so he, he's sitting at a table talking to his mother and he keeps bringing up her sexual partners and talking about her fucking people and like yeah, I can be quite awful to my mother. Like, you know, people can, you know, pick a fight with their mother, their parents. But the last thing I would ever bring into the conversation <laughs> is sex. Yeah. And specifically, like, what they've done sexually. Like, no. Yeah. No, this kid's weird. And then he, at the end, he witnesses yeah. the, the thing with the uh, the Reverend in Sydney. When he's out skateboarding, yeah. like the, the hip kid that he is. <laughs> Fucking ginger. Yeah, this kid was a total d bag. Um, <laughs> I didn't care for him at all. Uh, I hope he gets possessed and like, I don't know, gets impaled on a skateboard or something. Yeah, because it's like they're doing the oh, he's the obnoxious teenager, but turned up to eleven because he's just that yeah. awful to his mother. It's weird. Yeah. Um, but there was him. Uh, there was a slight advancement as well uh, with Megan and Mark and her like her attacker when she was a teenager. Because he's now shown up in a hospital after Mark beat the everlasting shit out of him. Yeah. And now she's got something to hold... He's got something to hold over her head. And we don't know exactly what he's asked of her. If he's even asked her yet. But he's like, let her know, like, I can, you know, send your husband to I, prison or whatever. Yeah, basically. It seemed like he was just kind of, yeah, power tripping and basically being like, you know... Yeah, I, I don't know if he asked her for something specific yet, but it definitely seems like he's yeah saying like, "Hey, I'm gonna ask you <laughs> to do something," or I don't know. Yeah, so but, uh, but that, that's I can see him getting possessed at some point to wrap this up so that the the problem yeah. goes away. But I don't know when that'll happen. Maybe the end of the season. I feel like every like like bad or annoying or evil character, you're like, all right, this person is is either going to get possessed or get the shit kicked out of them by a possessed person. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, another plot thread that we have to quickly mention as well is the whole investigation into that the uh, the trailer that was out in the woods. Uh, okay. The girl whose yeah. DNA they found went to see the the fire inspector guy. Yeah. And there's like some things happened to some. Like, so, there's some, I don't want to say convoluted, but there's, like, something mm-hmm. went on there, and it doesn't seem, like, because at first you're thinking, okay, did he have, like, an affair with this young woman, and, like, <laughs> but then the way they spoke to each other, it kind of felt like, no, that wasn't the case, but for some reason he covered up whatever they did, like, 
Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's more mm. to it. You might know more because you've read the book. Um, at least not off the top of my head. Um, okay. I don't think that's uh, a big ongoing thing in the book, unless it was maybe something in the first two books that I had forgotten. But mm. no, it's just a little not not a little bit of that puzzle uh, coming forward. Yeah, so, I, no. I know that stuff. Like, I know that stuff is necessary, but I know um, I'm kind of like, all right, yeah, this is this is fine or whatever. But let's kind of get back to the possessed people. <laughs> That's what I'm a little more interested. I'm, just, I'm in. sure it'll tie in at some point. Like, it'll yeah, yeah, be relevant. There'll be cultists or something that are helping the demons, or I don't know. True. Yeah. Whatever's going on. Uh, but no, I thought it was a good episode. I thought uh, like now we're post episode five, which I thought really <laughs> gave us the emotional connection. That we needed to really care about Kyle and his family. Now, yeah. because that motivation is driving what he's doing in this episode, I'm finding mm-hmm. myself caring about the show as a whole a bit more. Yeah. So I no, I enjoyed this episode, and I, I love the whole because uh, the job he's got is he's a uh, he's like covering like potholes and cracks in the road with uh mm-hmm. like the like tar. tar. And I loved mm-hmm. how they had that bubble. And it looked like the same shit that the demons turn into when they come out the uh, yeah. the people. I thought that was cool touch. Oh yeah, definitely. Um. Do you know how many episodes this season is? I believe it's ten, so I think we've got four left. Okay. So, yeah. no, that was a good episode. Uh, that's Outcast this week. Uh, the Ginger will be back next week uh, when he's back from his stupid Star Wars thing. <laughs> Let us know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe and all that jazz. We always appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. Thanks very much for watching. We will see you next time.